to coming home, survive and thrive in homeschooling. Today we have another question and answer session. I have three questions that have come my way. The first one is about what to do if you are still feeling tired at the end of the school term. Second one is about outings and field trips. And the third is homeschooling on a budget these days with the uh, cost of living etc just going up substantially. This is even more pertinent so I'm going to address that as well. So first of all about still being tired at the end of the school holidays before you start again. I saw a young homeschooling friend a few weeks back. It was nearly the end of the school holidays and she said she wasn't really feeling ready for the new term, still tired. And I thought what we talked about might be of help to you. So I'm including it in the question and answer today even though it wasn't officially a question. Do you feel that you have to catch up with a lot of friends over the holidays because you can't during the term? Perhaps their children are at public school or for whatever reason you don't see them during the school term. It's lovely to catch up with friends, but if you're left feeling like there's not much time left for the resting and planning you need to do, here are a couple of thoughts. You don't need to see everyone. In fact, if it feels like there's a drifting apart due to different lifestyles, that's okay. Friends come and go in our lives, and often they're what I call incidental friends. That is, you become friendly because you're doing things with them at the time. Work colleagues can fall into this category. Remember when you left work, how you thought you'd stay in touch, but you never did. You got on well, you had lunch together, shared the ups and downs of life with them, but they were incidental friends. It puzzled me when I was a young adult, but not anymore, because I understand what an incidental friend is. The same goes for church, preschool or kindy, school and sport and any other activity that brings groups of people together. You are friendly with them and they with you, but they're probably not friends, as in continuing to be in your life. And there are a few who remain friends for years, but most come and go. Of all the friends I knew over my homeschooling years, there are only two I see regularly and maybe another once a year. The rest were incidental friends, even though we got on so well at the time and shared time together. You can test it by seeing these people less, perhaps every second set of school holidays. And if you are feeling unsure, let's say somebody calls you up and say, hey, I haven't seen you for ages, how about we get together in the holidays? I think a good idea is to reply to them let me get back to you. I need to look at my diary. Whatever it is you say, just say to them, let me get back to you. This was actually wise advice a friend gave me and I put it into practice and it was so, so helpful because when somebody is calling you, they've already thought about it and know what they want. But when they get you, it's like you've been taken by surprise and you are feeling like you need to say yes probably more than no, but definitely you've got to think about it very, very quickly. You're going to give yourself some space and time if you just say, let me get back to you. There's a concept I came across a few years ago to help me decide how to spend my time, specifically with people. It was actually based on the universal principle of tithing. That is... 90% of my time is for spending with family and people that have a special place in my life. And you'll know who those people are. The other 10% are for everybody else. Friends you might not see very often, you fill in the gap. You'll know what I mean. That concept helped me enormously. If you work out what 10% of the time is, then you can go to your diary and decide how many times are actually available in this period of time in New Zealand. It's two weeks for a school holiday break. 
And once you've got those slots opened up in your diary and they're filled, they're filled. Unless there's a cancellation and then you can slot somebody in. <laughs> hey, you could even have a wait list. But don't be tempted to agree to another because you open up your diary and you say, oh, I haven't really got anything planned for that day. Oh, I guess I could. Yes, you have got something planned. You have your own time out to show up for. Perhaps it's a slushy book or a movie that you've been putting off during the school time and saving it for your time down. See my earlier episodes on looking after you and how to ensure you're rested over the holidays. I will be sure to put those two episodes below in the show notes. So if you do get to the end of the school holidays and you know you're not ready to start the school term, top hint for the day, delay starting your term. I know that sounds rebellious, doesn't it? But you are going to thank me for that advice because that might be all you need to get yourself back up and ready to go, refreshed and pumped for your school term. If you just push through the hero and martyr that you are, you are never going to catch up over that school term. And don't ask me how I know this hero and martyr that I thought I was. On to question number two then. Regarding outings and field trips, whatever it is that you like to call them. First, you need to know what it is that the world is your classroom. Not only do you need to know it, but you need to understand the concept and have it in practice. So if you are struggling with the notion of letting go that schoolwork has mostly to do with the bookwork, Keep your outings to a minimum for now and then get to work on reshaping your mindset. This is how you were educated, which is why you keep falling back on it as normal. But that's not what you're homeschooling for. It's our privilege to design our homeschooling to suit the needs of our family and to do a better job, a richer job than what we went through in the public setting. If you have to force yourself to let that old notion go, deeply ingrained as it is, do it. Buckle up, metaphorically, and force your way through reshaping that mindset. The world is your classroom. Fake it till you make it your homeschooling truth, because it is. If you're going on your field trip, outing, whatever you call it, and then you're coming home to catch up or making your kids do book work over the weekend, you need a major rethink. True, the three R's are important, but they aren't always done in a book. The old chestnut of balance, so easily said, but so complex. How do you define balance? What if your idea of balance is different than mine? Well, I would actually expect it to be different. But if you're at home in your books more than out in the classroom of the world, that's not balance. And if you're always out and about with books hardly touched, that's not balanced either. Balance is somewhere in the middle with the high likelihood of one week looking different from another. If it helps your mental health, stressing about whether you're getting behind or if it's too much, get your outings and your book work requirements into a diary so you can see it and it will lessen the worry about balance. What if an opportunity comes up, like a speaker or a show you didn't know about? Leave your books and go to the show. The show is once and your books will be there tomorrow. In five years time, it won't matter. In five months time, it won't matter. And it probably won't matter in five days either. But do be aware of when you're using the excuse of going out as a way of avoiding what needs to be done. You'll know when you are. Be honest with yourself. It's easier than the guilt you will feel later. Question number three. How to homeschool on a budget. 
I will link an earlier episode called Thinking About Money where I did address some of what it means to plan for money and expenses when you're homeschooling because more often than not, you're down to one income. But these days, the cost of living and the rate of inflation is going up and it's taking a lot of people by surprise. So I have got today some urgent budget gems. I've put together a list that I hope will be of help to you. The first thing I want to say, if you have to suddenly pull your belt in a little bit and change a few spending habits, it's better to see it as a challenge or self-competition and not a trigger for woe is me and to send you into a bit of a depressional funk. On to the list. Once a month, Choose a low buy or no buy week. Plan your eating from the fridge, fossick about in your freezer and pantry and find all those little odds and ends that can be brought out and made into a meal for your family. You'll be surprised at what is there. Stop throwing away food. It might only be a little bit. But that's okay, put it in a little container and pop it into the freezer. You can have it for lunch one day, or you can get it out and add it to a soup, or you can keep it there for when you have your low buy or no buy week. But as the female, I know that I could serve my dinner on a smaller plate, so the dinner looks fuller on a smaller area. My auntie actually lost weight gradually over a period of time, and the only thing she did different was that. She just served a luncheon plate instead of a dinner plate, and she was never hungry. In the Northern Hemisphere, it's summer, and harvest is beginning. Have you got a dehydrator, or can you borrow one? There is so much food that comes in at that time of the year that you can dehydrate and pop it away for later on. The advantages of dried food is that you don't need freezer space for it. It keeps for a long period of time and because it is literally shrunk, it takes up less storage in your cupboards. If you don't have a dehydrator or can't borrow one, you can use the oven. You can Put your oven on to the lowest setting and with a wooden spoon or two, just crack that door open and leave it open a little bit and let the food that's in it just gradually dehydrate. I'm thinking specifically of chopped up bits of fruit, thinly sliced, blueberries, perhaps peas, grated carrots, spread them out on an oven tray thinly so that they dry out quicker. Turn harvesting and food prep into schoolwork so that because there's a lot of work to be done in bringing in the harvest or going picking and preparing it, you need to cut back some of the book work time and substitute it as another type of work, which is learning how to prepare food for other times of the year. And it's such a valuable skill to teach your children. And don't feel guilty about it. Slightly to do with the earlier question on coming to terms with putting your book work aside when you go for an outing. Similar principle here. This is not a lesser educational experience than the book work is for your children. In fact, I would argue that it's probably more important because your kids are going to have to learn how to plan and how to recognize the right times in your life when it's prudent to stop and prepare for harder times. If you need some money quickly, start taking a look around your house. What have you got to sell that you don't actually need anymore? Have you got old gym equipment that's just really behaving as a clothes rack? Have you got equipment that you're not using anymore? Whatever it is, just start viewing the things that you're not using around the house regularly. What can you sell? Do you need any budgeting help to pay off debt? go and get it. You you often find local entities like a local church or through maybe your local library can offer free basic budgeting services and that can be such a help just to get some ABC principles into your life to just to help you. Plan a capsule wardrobe for yourself and the children and even though you're coming across 
end of season sales and such a bargain you can't walk past it oh yes you can and yes you should it might be cheap it might be good value but do you actually need it you can look up on youtube what it means to put together a capsule wardrobe delay purchasing things especially big ticket items so that you're taking the impulse out of it go home think about it maybe give it a week or so until you can actually decide do you need this can you replace it with something else or can you put this off altogether i would suggest shopping online to save time and money i have been shopping online at the supermarket now for several years in fact, I consider that if I have to go to the supermarket during the week, I have failed. Shopping online means that I'm not impulse buying and it saved me time, which is actually worth something when you are a busy homeschooling mum. If you are not cooking from scratch, that is a skill you need to learn. There's plenty of YouTubes and podcasts and heaps of recipe books to show you very basic stuff write down everything you buy so that nothing kind of gets accidentally lost in your mind what have you got that you can cancel netflix subscriptions to other things do you have a cd or an old vhs player dust it off and use it you can pick up cds and videos still do libraries still have cds what's in your homeschooling library that you can borrow swap and borrow games, puzzles and books with your friends. Start a small garden. Please note I said small if you have not been accustomed to gardening. Bigger gardens can get out of control really quickly. So maybe starting planting in containers are better. But if you are not used to gardening, get advice so that you don't waste time and money in just doing it wrong. But you can grow quite a few things in containers and they don't take a lot of space. And with the price of fresh fruit and veg going up all the time, even just having a few lettuces that you can pick and go off on the deck are just going to save you some money. Use what you've got before buying more. And do you actually need it when you have run out? Apply this to food and to other things like your makeup, skincare and household items. Use rags instead of paper towels. Exceptions would be soaking up fat. Some say use brown paper bags, but trust me, just skip this one. Squash the toilet roll and teach your children to use less. If you have got some other quick little budget gems that you can share with people that would be outside of what I've said today, I'd love it if you could include it. I would love to see some new ideas too because I get so used to what I'm doing. All right, that's my questions for today. And please keep those questions coming. It doesn't matter if you think it's a silly question. I will answer it. Thank you for listening. I encourage you to go to our website again, cominghomeinfo.com. And if you've found this podcast helpful, if you've found any of my podcasts helpful, please pass them around. All right, I'll catch up with you all next week. Bye-bye.